my generation is running a scam. We steal from you young people. Excuse me, I need to take this phone. What are this you doing? Is, hey, get that I'm, back. I'm old, I need this. All uh, right, Mr. Dow, I, I need this Dow. Stop, stop. I need to take this scooter. Hey, get that back. Okay, I don't normally grab things from kids, but we get government money like there's no tomorrow. Because of Medicare and Social Security, government takes money from the young and gives it to people my age and older, even if we have plenty of money. And most older people are richer than young people. Look at this chart. People about my age have an average net worth that's more than double what 50-year-olds have and 27 times what 30-year-olds have. And yet, the 30-year-olds are taxed to pay for my health care. This is why I say America should cut entitlements. And if we don't, Medicare and Social Security will suck every penny away from young people. Young people like Jonathan Bidlack of the Coalition to Reduce Spending. So obviously you want spending reduced. But Mike Consul of the Roosevelt Institute says government should spend more. More? Are you kidding? This is exactly how social insurance works. It's how all insurance works. And one thing about young people, regardless of what Miley Cyrus and other of their role models might tell them, is they will someday not be young people. They will get older. They will get older every year. And someday they will be old people. And they're going to need retirement security. They're going to need health care. This is unsustainable. We're taking too much. It's totally sustainable. Social security has a small gap, which is manageable. We can right. either cut it or, or not do it. Or if we don't do anything on Medicare, it will bankrupt the government. If, we, if right. we don't do it through the government, it'll just bankrupt every individual person. I mean, every study that sees things like turning Medicare into a voucher increases health care costs. The government has a unique size. But you said ability. you want to spend more, so we'll bankrupt the government more quickly? I don't get it. You left-wing think tanks confuse me. So Medicare, we need to cut the spending, and I think there's oh, strong okay. agreement on that. Social Security, I think we should spend a little bit more. I think these programs are working exactly how they're supposed to, and I think they do really good stuff. I want to scream at him, but I'll, Jonathan, I, I'll let you talk. Well, I think the irony is what you pointed out in, earlier is that, you know, look, young people have less savings. They have less accumulated wealth than older generations. And so, you know, people talk a lot about income inequality. And the reality is that we have government programs that are set up to take from that segment of the population, young people, who have less wealth and give it to those who are in a better position, which are the older generations. So, um, you know, these programs are kind of are antiquated and they were meant for an age in which people didn't live to the, the same ages that we do today. Yeah, that's a big point. When Social Security was passed, most people didn't even reach 65. Right. And now, you know, I rudely refuse to die. I want all the good <laughs> stuff that Medicare will pay for. No one wants to throw, you know, the older generation out on the streets and have them not have health care or not have retirement savings. The real question is, what's the best way to do that? If you look at those, those industries where cost goes down, like, say, technology, it's areas where government is generally not that involved. And the things where we often yeah, hear that we need... When people shop around and government isn't involved, there's competition, prices come down! And compare that to education or health care, where government is very much involved and costs are out of control. Well, I, the market for a cell phone, like as kids I'm sure know, is not a market for insurance. I mean, there's, there's something where you can Market's get... Market's a market. No, there's, there's, you need groups, you need risk pools, you need large insurance. I mean, there's, there's a lot of reasons why we think the insurance market will function a little differently than, say, food or phones or technology. How much more should the rich pay? At the top rate, let's say 45. Does that sound good? I'm already paying 50. Not the top rate. At 39. I'm, I'm talking about the federal oh, rate. State, the total taxes is 50. But we, we should have taxes wherever they need to be to sustain what we need to do. And what we need to do is provide retirement security for old people and health care for Americans. It's just not possible. We've run the numbers. If you took every penny from millionaires and billionaires, every penny, it would be about $660 billion. And that just covers today's deficit. It doesn't touch the, un the $30 trillion unfunded liability that's coming up. Absolutely. Well, that's why it's the people's pension. I mean, everyone contributes to Social Security, and everyone will take advantage of it when they hit an elderly age. Same thing with Medicare. What if we gradually phased out the unsustainable entitlements by letting young people opt out? Ron Paul proposed that. Would you consider opting out of the whole system under one condition, you pay 10% of your income, but you take care of yourself. Don't ask the government for anything. 
and he got a standing ovation. So what's wrong with that, Mike? Uh, that, that is the ultimate in freedom and liberty, is being able to starve in the streets as an elderly person. Oh, come on. You're not starving I mean, that, that, in the that's streets. Harsh. You're that's saying, harsh. I take care of myself. I'll, I'm responsible for myself. I'll put it this way. We, we are doing a real-time experiment on this over the past couple decades. Um, you know, we're, we've been seeing the 401k programs, which have been meant to try to provide retirement security. I think it's fair to say they've been an, an pretty much a failure. There's a lot of tax breaks that go to the rich. Um, which is exactly the kind failure. of failure. People have pensions that they control. They're, they're not saving enough to even replicate a basic amount of what they want in, in their retirement. And I think the under savings, it's very difficult for people to save that way. In real life, when governments promise people money that governments don't have, people suffer. A bunch of towns have already gone bankrupt. One was Pritchard, Alabama. We want our money. They didn't pay us like they're supposed to. Alfred Arnold recently retired from the Pritchard Fire Department after working 35 years for the city. He'd hoped to relax and travel. Now, at age 66, he's a security guard at the local mall. We put our money in every payday like you're supposed to, and it's here supposed to pay us, but they did not. I think the story about Alabama is also very important for why these are, should be federal programs. I mean, the, the strengths and the, the trials of any individual state or any individual city are going to come and go with the economy. I mean, Detroit used to be an industrial powerhouse. Now it's in really bad shape. But the federal Isn't government... the principle the same? Politicians, federal or local, are either good or responsible or venal. I think the United States is going to have a productive future over the next few decades, and we can totally meet the requirements. Even though all the projections it. say bankruptcy. Well, all the projections say health care costs will bankrupt the government, or if we don't do it through the government, they'll bankrupt every individual person. So the question is, what's the best way to do it? And I think really going hard and trying to cut costs from Medicare, which we are trying to do right now, I think is the right solution. But the way that you cut costs, in my opinion, and I think the, uh, the way that a lot of young people believe you have to do that is by injecting competition into the system, right? The reason that we're seeing health care costs blowing out is because because we don't have that same competition that we have in other industries. Why are Americans as clueless as Mike and not upset about our 30 trillion or more dollar unfunded liability? Because most don't know about places like Pritchard, Alabama, and most don't even know that America now is 17 trillion dollars in debt. How much is America in debt? I don't know. <laughs> okay. No, I don't know. I'm not don't sure know. exactly, but I know it's a lot. Do you know? How many billions? It's a, trillion. It's, a, it's a couple of trillion, I think. Mm. I don't know. This ignorance helps your argument. I think they understand that, you know, that they pay when they're young, they pay when they're middle-aged, and they collect when they're old. This is how insurance has always historically worked, and it's a good system. It's worth defending. Well, it's a system, again, that was it's meant been for a, a good system. It was meant for a population structure that doesn't exist nowadays, right? We have way we more people. lots of workers, a few old people. Exactly, and that's probably going to uh, not change for the better going forward.